Hey everyone, uh, my name's Andy. My channel is Finding Value, and I'm getting some really good comments in the in the YouTube, you know, on the YouTube clips. And someone asked that, or stated that inflation is the rising uh, is rising prices measured by CPI, and I would say that it's, it's I disagree with that definition. The definition of Inflation, if you just think of inflating, is to make bigger. And what causes inflation is an increase in expansion or the inflation inflating the money supply and credit. Uh, you can't just have prices increase just because they increase. You have to have more money. The supply of money has to go up in order for prices to go higher on all of these prices. If a price of something goes up and the money supply stays fixed, that means that this has to go down. You can't increase your total cost of everything in a system and not have the price and not have an expansion in the money supply. It is impossible. It's incongruent. So the CPI was created to to take attention off of the bankers. The bankers are creating the expansion of money and credit. That has an effect in the system differently on different things. They can blow up a stock market bubble. They can blow up house prices. They can blow up certain things and they may be measuring things differently to, to, to mask it and to direct your attention somewhere else and not on them. And in the CPI calculation, they can do hedonic adjustments, which means they say, oh, this product's 20% better, we'll just discount it 20%. Oh, maybe it's 50% better, we'll discount it 50%. Well, no one challenges that 50%. They don't, they don't get challenged. They just lower it. They say, CPI, I'll make it whatever I want. And then we'll index it to this, we'll index payments, inf inflation adjusted payments to people, to a uh, to something that we can adjust ad nauseum. It's on purpose. And then they do substitutions. Look, ups, look up inflation and look up hedonic adjustments and substitutions. If, if you understand that, you realize that the CPI number is just a made up number. You shouldn't even be using it. And then by definition of inflation, to inflate the original definition it means that it's the expansion in money and credit. Now, I look at the housing market because that's where, in fractional reserve lending, the greatest amount of expansion of money and credit is created. And this is why it's so important to understand this. That is where inflation comes from because that's your 10x in a 10% reserve, fractional, um, fractional reserve banking system. It comes from housing. It comes from real estate. And you can see it with all of the data that I've supported. So I wanted to go over this article. I wanted to start with that inflation uh, portion of it. And, and I'm not saying anyone's wrong because by definition in a new dictionary, it does say that it's rising and lowering prices. I get it. I'm not, you are technically right. But I'm also technically right because the definition before that was the one that I'm using. So it is very confusing because they changed the definition on us. And watch out for these changing definitions because they're going to do whatever they can to manipulate. That's my, my opinion on it. I've got an article here. It says, how 2020 broke the housing market. So many homes are selling that we could run out of new houses in months. This is October 23rd. The hottest pandemic purchase is a house. And I don't even think it's pandemic. I don't think there's anything to do with it. We were already on this path. Inventory was already super low and all the inventory is getting drawn down. More and more Americans take advantage of low mortgage rates. Nope, that's, that's not a driver. Some of these, when you read some of these articles, you gotta be careful. Low rates does affect affordability for home buyers. The problem is supply, demand, and balance. There's no homes for sale. 
says low mortgage rates to attain spacious backyards and more comfortable work from home lo locales. Uh, existing home sales, which have trended upward for months since the housing market reopened from shutdown, soared to a 14 year high in August. New home sales are also up. Home prices are soaring too, recording the highest two month appreciation between May and June at 2% in 30 years of record keeping. But not enough new houses are being built to keep up with the demand, a trend that actually goes back a decade. Total inventory hit a record low of just 2.7 months supply in September. Home buying in, an, in all of its trendy glory only project projects to get more expensive if not impossible. If homes keep selling at this rate, US could actually run out of the new, new ones in just a few months. The pandemic has nothing to do with this. Throw that, crinkle it up, throw it in the garbage. It's all an excuse. The problem is we do not have enough homes. And in 2008, when we had that big mortgage debacle that was created by government, they backed loans and they all went bad. It all collapsed. It created a gigantic amount of foreclosures which ruined the new housing market. Government screwed it. They screwed it all up. That is where the blame should be. They create inflation, they created this housing market, and they're gonna create the largest commodities super cycle that we're ever gonna see probably in our life. Don't listen to some of these articles, they have it wrong. And I'm not here to tell you that I have it all right. I want you to, to dig in and see what the truth is. If you have $10 and you've got a bunch of products out there, how, can the product, how could the price of all the products exceed the $10 that you have if the $10 is the only thing that's there? Can prices go up if all there is is $10 in that in economy? No, it can't. Then why the hell are we measuring prices? It's just the amount of money that's in the system. Another thing to keep in mind, if you have money and you put it in a bank and you don't spend it, they're gonna say the velocity is zero. The problem is they're not thinking, well, what if other people can loan against that money? The bank's gonna loan it out. It's a 10% reserve. They can create $10,000 on the 1,000 you put in there. The money supply increased, inflation, ensues. Prices are a symptom of inflation. They are not a driver of inflation. If that makes sense. Once you wrap your head around this, you're going to start looking at the world a little differently. So then you're going to be looking for the expansion and contraction of money supply and credit. Because that is the driver of prices. You can't have prices go up if that doesn't go up. It is impossible. Therefore, inflation measured by CPI cannot happen without a money supply increase of money supply, which is money or credit. That has to increase first before you have inflation. If that is a fact, then inflation by definition is the increase and in expansion of money. This is Finding Value. Hope you enjoy the clip. Thank you.